Assalamu alaikum and welcome to tonight's live show on Imam Hussain TV. Two inspirational women, the Blessed Virgin Mary and Fatima Zahra, Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon both of them. You'll find globally three billion people adore both women, both representing two big faiths, Christianity and Islam. In this given world at the moment that we live in, how can we bring together the parallels? How can we show the biographies of both personalities? What sort of biographies are they really um, expressing in today's life? What can we actually express to unite and harmonize the world with interfaith dialogue? Is there enough or is there not enough? Let's have a look first of all at the biography and the life of, of, of uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary. With me tonight, we have Dr. Sayyid Amar Naqshwani. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyid Amar. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. It's a great pleasure to have you on once again. My pleasure, thank show. you. Thank you very much. So tonight, we're going to be looking at a number of different angles, as it were, of these two great ladies, as it were. Uh, we're going to be looking at the biographies, the parallels, um, inspiration. Um, so first of all, Sayyid Amar, how can the Blessed Virgin and... Sayyidina Nisa al Alameen Fatima Zahra, Salaam Alaikum, unite the world today on peace and love. And this is very, very key at, at, I mean, in this time. First and foremost, congratulations to the whole of the Muslim Ummah on the week of the blessed birth of Fatima al Zahra. Alayhi salam. Salaam Alaikum, peace be upon you. And I think you mentioned a wonderful point within your question that can these two be a source of uniting some really extremist factions in both religions. Yes. Islam and Christianity, both at present and in the past, have had extreme factions who have despised one another, who have fought one another, who have hated one another, and who have been willing to kill one another thinking that this is what the main protagonists of the religion actually taught. Whereas the reality is that sometimes our lack, lack of understanding of the greats and those who allow the two religions to connect means that we are far away from their teachings. If you ask many Christians in the world today, what do you know about Fatima? They might only mention to you a, a place where it is seen as a place of pilgrimage in Portugal. If you ask... Many Muslims in the world today, what do you know about Maryam? You know that there is a chapter, for example, named Maryam. What do you truly know about the angel's relationship with Maryam? About the food that came to Maryam? About the intercessory aspect of Maryam? About the rosary bead of Maryam? Mm -hmm. All of these different aspects of Maryam, السلام, sadly, there are many Muslims who have not reflected upon. Yeah. Therefore, Maryam and Fatima, if the Muslim world and the Christian world was to reflect upon them, and even put Jesus and the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, put them aside. You put the Prophet Jesus السلام, and the Prophet Muhammad, السلام, put them aside and just look at Mary and Fatima. You'll find there are many valuable spiritual lessons which the two faiths so badly need. Mm. Because at the moment you're seeing an evangelical side to Christianity that is harboring some sort of hate towards the other. And in Islam, certainly since 9-11, yeah. 
You've seen a strand of Islam far away from the teachings of Fatima and a strand of Christianity in response far away from the teachings of Mary. Mary. So therefore, our aim has to be to sit back and reflect on these two ladies who themselves never led wars, never ordered killings. Quite right. And on the contrary, were victims in some cases of oppression in their time, but maintained dignity throughout. And I think that type of dignity and the study of the biography of the two yes. is fundamental in the West especially now. Because when you're looking in Europe and you're looking at other parts of the world, there's a far-right element in Christianity yeah. and a far-right element in Islam so, and both receive most of the headlines. Sure. You know, no one's really going to look at tolerant Islam or no. tolerant Christianity. No one's really going to look at the Christians who've worked their hardest to bring medical aid to Muslim refugees or Muslims who have helped Christian children mm. on seashores to ensure that they're safe away from the dangers of ISIS and so on. So both religions at the moment require a return to their figures who were moral exemplars. And I think this return is needed right now. Yes, yes. Um, and hopefully we'll have uh, a lot of uh, Christians as well watching this. Um, Dr. Amar Nakshwani, um, so now if you can possibly speak about, I mean, what I want to, I'm curious about to find out is, have any academics looked at the similarities of their biographies, which our viewers can access? It's a great question. And I'm a firm believer that there's a great amount of literature on Islam by Muslims and non-Muslims, which can be beneficial for the Muslim world. Yeah. The Muslim world has access to primary sources, no doubt. Every religion would want to read its primary literature and from the main scholars of that religion. But I found there's a couple of writers out there who have written extensively on either Maryam and Fatima together or looking at Fatima and her role in the Shi'i world, but how similar it is to Maryam's role in the Christian world. Yes, yes. And we know very well that Mary is revered in Christianity, but there are different levels of reverence. Sure. Catholicism, one may argue, shows a bit more reverence than Protestant, Protestant. thought. Fatima is revered by all Muslims. I think one may argue the Shia have a much greater focus than one may even argue a respect in relation to Fatima al-Zahra than any other school in the religion of yes, Islam. Yes. And anyone out there who wants to who wants to look at this, can find that there are certain people that if Fatima is angry with them, the Shia are angered by whoever angers Fatima, whereas there are others who don't have a problem with whoever angers Fatima. Now, what happens, therefore, is that you've got in the academic world, I'll give you an example. There is a book called, and I love all the viewers if they can order it, okay. and by the way, I'm not getting any commission by sure. them ordering it, so I'm not just recommending it because I have a contract with the, with the author or anything. There's an author called Thurlkill. Okay. Yeah. Uh, T H U R L K I L L. -L. Thelkill wrote a book called Chosen Among Women. Okay. Chosen Among Women. And looks at Fatima and Maryam in Roman Catholic and in Shi'i thought. Right. Because Catholicism and Shi'ism is a very interesting uh, discussion. Mm. There seems to be an overlap there is on a this. lot of the concepts in Catholicism. And a lot of the concepts in Shi'i thought. Thurkil does a brilliant job of looking at Mary and Fatima al-Zahra salam. And I recommend all the viewers to have a look at this because in examining the biography of Mary and examining the biography of Fatima, you find that there is an unbelievable overlap. Right. I think that there are Christians out there, if they saw the overlap in relation to the angelic and the mystical, and the spiritual, and the salvation, and the intercession mm. of Maryam and of Fatima, they will be in disbelief, that there is so much similarity. Beautiful. And I think Thurkill does a great job 
And the book is available on Amazon, Chosen okay. Among Women. Right. Another author I have great respect for in the way she examines Fatwa Zahra's biography and sometimes relates it to Eve, okay. sometimes to Mary, and that is Karen Ruffle. Right. Those of you out there interested in pursuing further studies on Fatwa Zahra and her biography, Karen Ruffle has written many brilliant articles. Okay. Um, there was an article of Karen Ruffle, I remember, May Fatima Gather Our Tears, wow. which was a really wonderful article about uh, Fatima Zahra's role in affecting the Muslim world in the Middle East, but also in the South Asia. Okay. Uh, how Fatima Zahra plays a major role in the salvation of Shia within literature. So Karen Ruffle, uh, Mary Thurkill, uh, they've, they've written extensively. Also, Father Christopher Clohesse. Right. Now, Father Christopher Clohesse has written a book, Fatima, Daughter of Muhammad. Okay. And this week in London, um, at Haidari on Friday and at Stanmore Mosque on Saturday, the father will be uh, speaking extensively about why he as a priest wrote a book on Fatima al Zahra alayhi salam. And at Cambridge University, University of Cambridge on March the 4th, at the Wolf Institute, there's a brilliant program being organized uh, by the Hikmah Foundation. Okay. Um, and this program, uh, Father Clohesse, Professor Sajjad Rizvi, Sheikh Muhammad Al Hilli, um, Sister Safiya Tharu, and Ruhi Hassan, all of them will be presenting on different aspects of Fatima's life. But you would say uniquely a father mm -hmm. speaking about Fatima. His love is Mary. Yeah. His salvation yes. is Christ. Yes. But you find that in his book, Fatima, Daughter of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa he, he wonderfully examines the different aspects of Fatima and her relationship with Maryam. Okay. So I personally think that if you go to the academic world, you can find some outstanding articles from Thurkill, from Karen Ruffle, from Christopher Clohesse, that have sought to, in one way or the other, find an overlap mm -hmm. or harmonize so that there is interfaith dialogue yes, on yes. this area. Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, just for the benefit of our viewers, I do urge also non-Muslims and Christians, particularly for this show, to call in. The telephone number is 0203 515 0199. Uh, Dr. Sayyid Aman um, what is exactly the true meaning of dialogue? And that's also to elaborate further, um, what I find, and perhaps in your observance as well, and experience, uh, many of these interfaith dialogue events, um, they seem to be you know, quite nice, pleasant, there's good conversation and so on and so forth, but perhaps just not meaningful, it's just killing time. I think in this day and age, coming together and talking is meaningful. Yeah. It's vital, not just meaningful. For me and you, we can go out in the streets of London today and not be affected at all with Islamophobic comments. Mm. But our sisters who, for example, are wearing the headscarf could easily be the victims of Islamophobic comments. Unless we're sitting on a table and engaging in dialogue and talking with one another. Now, I agree with you that sometimes interfaith dialogue is more about the tea and biscuits yeah. than it is about true development and growth. Progression, yes. I do believe there are many who do great work out there which is underrated, mm -hmm. which is undervalued. And I do believe that every mosque in the UK has to have an office which focuses on interfaith dialogue. Yes. With our Christian brethren, with our Jewish brethren, with our Hindu brethren, with our Sikh brethren, with our Buddhist brethren, and even with those who do not have faith, True. but want to build a society where we can live in harmony. harmony. The true meaning of dialogue, if you look at the etymology of the word dialogue, is to see through the lens of the other, seeing through the other. Wow. Many of us are not willing to study Mary of Christianity, all we're interested in is Mary of the Quran. Yes. So concepts in the biography of Mary, therefore, such as, let's say, annunciation or intercession mm -hmm. or the rosary 
or certain festivals such as the Feast of Santa Maria and, uh, and, uh, and for example, you know, uh, other areas of salvation, many of us have not seen what Christians believe on these areas. True. And we end up, therefore, being bigoted and prejudiced, thinking that we know everything about Mary, Absolutely. simply because we're not really engaging in dialogue. Dialogue is a, is a f involves scriptural reasoning. Yes, yes. Bring yes. the scriptures together. You can't just always say, well, what does it say in the Quran? Have you considered thinking, well, what's it saying in the Bible? Yeah. What's the Bible's opinion on this area? So that when I'm living with my Christian brethren, I understand what they believe. Mm -hmm. So I think that in this day and age, I don't care if interfaith dialogue just involves pleasantries. We need dialogue at a time where there is prejudice, stereotype, and lack of integration, True. and a lot of discrimination. Yes. Yes. And it's not just Islamophobia. There are many other phobias that unless we engage in dialogue on the likes of Mary and the likes of Fatima, we're going to end up hurting each other. Of course. No, very well said. Thank you for that. Um, now turning to, um, just for the moment, the Holy Quran. What do you think God intended when he names a whole chapter of the Holy Quran? And, and actually, Christians should be aware of this, that there is a chapter in the Holy Quran, named after Mary, known as Maryam in Arabic? Well, I think the first thing is that you're really shattering the patriarchal Arab arrogant men. men. That, hey, there's a chapter named after Maryam, and there's even prophets of God in the Quran who did not get chapters mm. named after them. There's no chapter called Moses. Yes. There's no chapter called Jesus. His mom got a chapter. Yeah. And I think you're shattering the stereotype and the, and, and the bigotry shown towards women in, in that Arabian period by saying there's a whole chapter to be named after Maryam. Mm -hmm. I think secondly, it's allowed for dialogue in that nascent Muslim community that there was interaction, A, with the Roman Empire. Yes. There's a whole surah in the Quran called the Romans. R Romans yes. I think many people recite the surah in the holy month of Ramadan. Ramadan. That's right. It's a wonderful aim to try and bring dialogue that when there's a surah called the Romans, Rum, the aim of that surah is to allow the people to see that the Romans did defeat the Persians, that there is a faith in God that was victorious having been defeated. Yes. But also that there is room to engage Kisra of Persia with dialogue. Mm -hmm. Number three, Abyssinia was led by a Christian priest yes, who yes. virtually saved the religion of Islam. That's right. The verses that Ja'far al-Tayyar, brother of Amir al-Mu'min Ali ibn Talib alayhi salam, the verses that Ja'far al-Tayyar quotes from Surat Maryam are verses which bring a wonderful sense of light to the heart of that Christian priest yes. in Abyssinia. But also the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family, tells his companions in this period, and you know, sanctions at any time are difficult for any country. True, true. It's difficult for you as a group of people to have sanctions on you. So when you've got these sanctions on you at the time, who helps the early nascent Muslim community? It's a Christian priest. Mm -hmm. What's quoted? Maryam, the chapter on her, on the birth, birth of Christ. Yes, yes. And, and so therefore, Surah Maryam is this pivotal surah. It's not the only surah in the Quran where Mary and her birth, birth. and the you know, immaculate conception and so on is mentioned. However, I think it's a pivotal moment for the growth of Islam and for the relations between Muslims and Christians, Christians. at the time. Yeah, yeah. okay. Let's, let's um, really start to mold, as it were, and and you know, set aside, as it were, the first half of this show towards her. But um, in reality, the Holy Quran, there's also another chapter, which is the third chapter, Ali Imran. And that's also related to her, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, can you? Uh, yeah, as in uh, Mary's father, Yeah. Imran, you know, you're talking Moses, alayhi salam, and Imran. Mm -hmm. There's that children of Israel lineage related to Imran. Yes. Um, Allah has chosen, fundamental point right. over here. Okay. Allah, inna Allah astafa Adam, Nuh. Allah chose Adam. Allah chose Noah. Noah. Allah chose the family of Abraham. Allah chose the family of Imran. This is vital, why? It seems God doesn't want elections to take place for his leaders on earth. 
He picks families which inherit leadership. Yes. I always find it interesting that when Prophet Muhammad died, peace be upon his family, everyone forgot his family. Yeah. yeah. Uh, forget for, for God. They actually started fighting them. Forget fighting them. They actually ended up beheading and killing them. Mm. But, but what's interesting is that in, in the Quran, God is a monarchist. Yes. He, he, he chooses families. And these families inherit the light of guidance and prophethood. And so, yes, Surat Al Imran, whether you're referring to, you know, Moses, Mary, Christ, there, there's this beginning of a discussion of the pivotal role of Maryam with the children of Israel, with Zachariah, mm -hmm. with the temples. Sure, sure. All beginning from the vow that yes. was made that I'm dedicating what's in my womb. Wow. And that vow is an interesting vow. You know, her father, Amran, and her mother. Uh, which in some traditions is known as Hannah okay. or Anne. Right. Uh, they make a vow about what they want their child to be or to do while the child's in the womb. I see. You, you ask many people, uh, w w what do you want your kids to be? They'll be like, well, ask them. There's only a few who, while she's pregnant with her son or with her daughter, has already asked God, allow them to be the following. Yes. And there are many prophets who believe that upbringing of your children begins even before the womb, where you pray to Allah, give me a child who's of the Salihin. Yes, yes, yes. Rabbi habli min al-Salihin, fabashannahu bi ghulamin halim. Abraham has his prayer. Mary's mom has a prayer that she's devoting her child to the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, she gets surprised when it's a girl. Uh, because she's thinking, well, is the girl the one who's going to cure the blind and the leper and the sick and raise the dead? And of course, God is the one with the greatest of plans that this daughter of yours is going to have a son who will do that. But this daughter is also going to be devoted. Wow. Yeah. Mashallah. Thank you. Right. Um, Let's really go into the detail yeah. of the life of uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary, also known as Maryam in Arabic. Um, first of all, I want to sort, start off with just asking, there is literature, but it's very scarce, as it were. What, what can yeah, you so you're using the Qur'an. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Now, and, the, and not only the Qur'an, but the only people uh -huh. who have knowledge of the lives of Jesus and Mary, in exactly the way they were, are the Ahlul Bayt Let me make this clear to the viewers. Right. Nobody is able to tell you about the lives of Jesus and Mary in Islam, except Muhammad and Al Muhammad sallallahu alaihi The Prophet Muhammad and his family. There are huge books on Hadith in Islam that have nothing on Jesus's biography. Mm. Whereas. Online, you can order a book called Jesus Through Shia Narrations or Jesus and Shia Narrations by Lagenhausen. It's available online. Okay. Nabi Isa's whole biography. And I will come to the proof of why Ahlul Bayt have that knowledge about all of these. But the okay. fundamental source of our knowledge is the Quran. Okay, yeah. okay. So, um, Dr. Amar Nakshwani, I just want to ask, I've always been under the assumption, as it were, that... Um, prophets were reser res are reserved, as it were, or there's a remit only for prophets to actually converse or speak to angels. Yet, yet we have um, a verse in the well, we have in chapter 19 three particular verses, as it were, that talk about the Blessed Virgin Mary speaking. Um, so she's a muhaddatha, and I'm just going to quickly paraphrase sure. because we've got a lot to get through. Sure. Um, so she veiled herself, as it were, to screen herself. Then we, the verses, then we sent to her our spirit, and, and there appeared to her a well-made man. And then the following uh, verses, she sought refuge, as it were, um, from Allah, and guarded herself against evil. Okay. And yes, because she's thinking, who's this man? Yeah. yeah. And then the third and final verses, he said, I am only a messenger of your Lord that I will give you a pure boy. Sure. So the point is this. 
what sort of status or rank did she achieve that she could actually converse and speak to the angels? A rank which some scholars felt led to her being known as a prophet. Right. However, the majority of the scholars do not believe in her as a prophet, but mm -hmm. they say that there are instances of great women in Islamic history. Yes. Who God allowed them to speak to the angels and the angels to speak to them. In the Quran, you could brilliantly paraphrase Surah 19, verse 17 to 19. Yes, yes. Jibra'il comes to visit Maryam. An angel mm -hmm. comes to visit Maryam. <clears throat> it's a huge honor. <clears throat> of no course, doubt. she's no doubt. She's baffled at the time because she's thinking, what's going on? Yes. Um, but what is going on is that he takes the form of a, you know, of a human being. being. And he has come to bring glad tidings. He comes as a protector. He comes to communicate with her. And anyone who therefore thinks that only angels can only communicate with prophets and that only prophets speak to angels, no. The verse in the Quran that shatters that concept is this, is this verse. verse. Yes. And that Maryam had communication with the angels. The angels, yeah. Not just communication. Can I add a second point? Yes. Maryam used to receive food from the angels. Yes, yeah, I was going to come to that point. The angel doesn't just communicate. Mm. The angel used to bring food that Zachariah used to see in the mihrab of Maryam. Yes. Summer fruits in the winter time, winter fruits in the summer. Yes. So now if I can just quickly uh, go to that particular sure. verse. Um, again, uh, it's in Ali Imran, which is a third chapter. And the verse that uh, Dr. Amman Akshwani alluded to is 37. And uh, again, I'll just quickly go into the, the um, interpretation, as it were, or the translation. So her Lord accepted her with a good acceptance and made her grow up a good growing and gave her into the charge of Zachariah in English. Whenever Zachariah entered the sanctuary to see her, he found her with food. He said, O Maryam, or Mary, Whence comes this to you? She said, it is from Allah. It is from God. Surely Allah gives to whom he pleases without measure. Mm. So the point here is, again, very similar on the lines of previously, you know, prophets prayed, they were conversing and they conversed as it were with angels and so on and so forth. Now all of a sudden, there's this great noble lady, a virgin, who's also been blessed with food, as it were, sent. Yes, angels. yes, yes. As I said, this is a huge moment mm -hmm. that anyone who says Islam is a religion where only men receive this guidance from the Lord, this shatters it. You've got an angel who God, because of the iman of this lady, yeah. and because of her devotion to God, God allows her to be in the presence of Jibra'il. Yeah. And it's interesting that where... They used to, the angel used to place the food is where Zachariah went and prayed to have a child, a right, son. Right. Because Zachariah thought, hold on, that place has food from Jannah, mm -hmm. from the heavens. So if I'm going to pray there, the energy right. is a barakah. Okay. So therefore, that was a lesson for all of us. Dua mm -hmm. can be prayed. Supplication, you can supplicate anywhere. But to supplicate where there has been an energy. Energy. Yes. There's yes. a huge difference. It's a, a sort of a mystical side, as sure. it were. Um, just moving on now. Um, we have, as it were, the rosary beads. Yes. Obviously not this one here, but, uh, uh, you know, a replica. So what sort of traditions do we find about the rosary bead, as it were? Uh, and, you know, the infallibility, as it were, around it. What, what can you mention about that? Well, the rosary bead is fundamental um, when you're looking at the biography of Mary. Um, and in Christianity, you'll have what are known as the decades. Decades, yes. Uh, decade, as we all know, refers to ten. Ten. And so you've got the Hail Marys. Mm -hmm. um, and before these decades and towards the end of these decades, you'll have one Lord's Prayer. Right. And just one just for the beat. benefit of Muslim viewers, yeah. naturally Christian viewers would know this, but what is a Hail Mary, as it were? Well, you know, th th there's a call out towards Mary, a recognition of the importance of Mary. Right. Um, uh, and recognizing also the, that there is salvation. Okay. Um, okay. 
from God because of the fact that this is the lady who had the pres had given us Christ. You know, so there is this unbelievable connection between us, the Lord, and Mary. Okay. Um, and so, as I said, these uh, decades, of course, there have been different uh, evolutions in the mm -hmm. church from 10 to 15. Right, right, right. How many right. are called out, when they're called out. Okay. However, the rosary bead plays this huge spiritual role. Okay. Yes. Okay, okay. Now, you've mentioned, you know, the, the actual rosary bead. Why is it so crucial when we look at the life of Mary, the word virgin? What, 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 what so significant, as it were, the status of... Well, I think the, the most yeah. pivotal moment in Maryam's life and described amazingly in the Qur'an. You know, Mary is mentioned in the Qur'an more than in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the, the conception and and the virgin birth is discussed vividly. Her, her emotions, her feelings. And it's also a moment where there's a first lesson to be learned, and that is never despair of God's mercy. If he wants to, he breaks all the laws of cause and effect. Okay. We are subject to those laws. Yeah. Cause and effect. Mm. The Lord, if he wants to... Be it is. Kun. Fayakun. You obey Allah, he gives you the ability to say kun fayakun. Because there are certain Muslims who say, what's the highest level I can reach spiritually? And I think many don't realize that you can actually reach a level of kun, fair kun, in its yeah. limited form. Uh, but that virgin birth of, and that virgin status of Mary uh, is fundamental in Christianity, of course. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and led certain Christian theologies into believing that Mary is the... Uh, that Christ is the son of God mm -hmm. because he had no father. Others tried to bring Joseph into it and so yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. So the virgin uh, birth is fundamental within Christianity. Okay. Um, so now we just have just under 10 minutes. So sure. we're going to sort of quickly go into the um, uh, following aspects as it were. What can you mention about infallibility as it were mm. of, of her? Of well, uh, uh, because she is a divine figure. It's very interesting because... When you look at the Gospel of Luke, you look at the Annunciation, yeah. there is this purity to Mary okay. in Christian thought. I, I would add a caveat in saying that there is also the sense that Mary herself seeks salvation. Uh, she seeks to be um, purified from you know, being a sinner. Okay. Um, and so some might say that that is a sign that she is not infallible. Mm -hmm. But I think if you're looking even within Shia literature, sometimes the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, when they're talking to the Lord, they say, forgive us, forgive us, forgive yes, us, yes, forgive yes. us. And that doesn't mean that they've sinned, sinned. But these are ways in which their followers are able to talk to their Lord, being taught by the Imams of Ahlul Bayt. Right. But definitely that purity, that you know, living a chaste life mm -hmm. is, are the key terms okay. within infallibility, alongside the potential to sin but the discipline not to yes and that can be seen within certain areas of christian literature okay okay you that yeah. nicely leads on to the next point because you mentioned the key word there chaste as it were so now coming on to the next point um is she sh shown as being siddiqa as it were yeah. and what what is this term as it were what what is it in reference to in, Siddiqa, to, to you know, Maryam has a number of titles which we'll uh -huh. find that Fatima and her share. Yeah. And Siddiqa is one of them. You know, their, their tongues are truthful tongues. Okay. They, they devote themselves to their Lord at an extremely young age. Mm -hmm. They devote themselves to the way of God, to the obedience of God. It's a lesson for all of us that religiosity isn't about how many majalis you've attended, how many ziyaras you've gone on how many hajj you've been to. Yes. But really it's about the truthfulness of your tongue. Yes, yes. Um, I think the truthfulness of your tongue is one aspect. And another is whether your tongue is the tongue that all it seeks to do is defame and backbite. There are people out there today who are seen as people of religion, but mm -hmm. I think the nickname BBC is apt for them. Yeah. You could call them Reuters even from the amount True. of uh, <laughs> gossip they have about the lives of everybody in the community. I think because they dress like Maulanas 
uh, people will always worship the dress and not worship what's behind it. Mm -hmm. As Bahlul wonderfully put it, when he wanted to go into a dinner organized by Harun al-Rashid at the castle, and uh, he came to the door and, and they looked at him and they're like, where do you think you're going? He goes, I've come for this dinner for the scholars. They're like, you're not a scholar, go away. So he went and bought an abaya and he bought a rosary bead. Right, right. And he came back and said, oh, Maulana, please welcome. He said, take the rosary, take the abaya. That's what you're more interested in. Mm -hmm. Maryam is Sadiqa. Right, right. She is Tahir. Okay. She's okay. truthful Purified. and pure. Yes. No uttering of lies. No defaming of others. No destroying others' lives. Uh -huh. And I think that is the ultimate sign of taqwa. Mm, okay, um, we've just got just under five sure. minutes, so probably the last points here. Um, her being an intercessor, as it were, and Shafiat, you know, is she, is she basically, can we have Shaf Shafiat, as it were? Or? Yes, yeah, intercession. In Christian thought, you'll Specifically find... Specifically the Catholic... Yeah, in Roman Catholic dogma, it's yeah. there. You've got the Feast of Santa Maria. There right. is a belief um, that Mary acts as an intercessor. She's the mother of the person who brings salvation. Okay. Um, okay. Yes. You can yes. ask God directly, but uh -huh. why not mention Mary? Right. Okay, okay. Viewers, do call in. We're going to be going for a short break uh, in just a moment or two. The telephone number is 203 515 Hopefully, inshallah, you are enjoying this show. Um, see you again in the next moment or two. Asalaamu As Alaikum. Asalaamu Alaikum and welcome back to tonight's live show. Two inspirational women where we're looking at the lives of the Virgin Mary and also Fatima Zahra. Asalaamu Alaikum. Peace be upon both of them. So, yeah, Asalaamu Alaikum and welcome Wa back. Wa Alaikum as -salam. A lot to get through. Um, just very um, quickly, right at the end of the sort of life, as it were, the aspects that we can possibly get. Um, and also, what I'm curious to find out is how old was she? you know, the Virgin Mary, when she gave birth to the divine birth, as it were, of the prophet. Yeah, nobody knows exactly how old um, Maryam salam, was when she gave birth to Christ. Right. What's clear uh -huh. is that she's in her early teens. Okay, okay. Uh, if you ask any Catholic priest out there today, I think they're not going to tell you that she's older than her early teens. Some might even go lower and say 12, mm -hmm. 13, 14. That's very interesting that God decides that his, uh, his son will be born to a 13-year-old. Okay. And for years, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family, was always attacked with the title pedophile mm, uh, because he, he married somebody supposedly aged 9, 10, 11, whatever. Yes. Uh, Mary gives birth to Christ at that young age. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so there is there is question marks about the exact age. No one can ever tell you, but they certainly believe it's in the early teens. Okay, yep. okay. I believe we might have a caller on the line. Salam alaikum. No, no, the caller has um, hung up. Um, now, just very lastly, as it were, salvation, salvation through her, as it were, and also I, I'm being quite quick here now. That you know. Um, how is God's religion saved, or as it were, how is salvation sought through her and that sort of divine aspect? What can we say about that? She is seen as the mother of the man who brings salvation to mankind. Uh -huh. Mankind are born sinners because of Adam's sin in Christian thought. Uh, there is a, a redemption, there's a repentance, all of it combined that brings, um, uh, that, brings that salvation to mankind through the crucifixion of Christ. Mm -hmm. So you've got another aspect of Mary, that her son is the one who saves God's path of guidance right. uh, through his death. And I think when you're looking at the similarities as we begin now with Fatima, you'll find that everything we've said about Mary 
we're going to see happened with Fatima yes, as well. Yes, so yep. that um, puts us into the second half of this show. Now looking at the life of Fatima Zahra, salam alayhi wa salam. We've looked at the first half, and let's go right into the parallels. As it yeah, was. one by one, yeah? we'll go through the parallels. So we've mentioned yep. that the Blessed Virgin Mary, she spoke, as it were, to angels. Did, did Fatima Zahra speak to if angels? If Mary, in the Quran, uh -huh. conversed with the angel, then why have a doubt that Fatima, daughter of Muhammad, peace be upon his family, can converse with the angels? Right. And that's why if Mary is known as Muhaddatha, sometimes uh -huh. in our communities, uh, you may have your daughter or niece or wife or mother called Muhaddatha. Or right. Muhaddatha. Mm -hmm. Muhaddatha is that female. Narration. Who? No. Muhaddatha okay. is the female narrator. Right. Muhaddatha. Uh -huh. With the Fatha. Muhaddatha is that female who converses with the angels. angels. Muhaddath. Right. In Shi'i and Sunni literature, mm -hmm. you have a concept of the Muhaddath. Yes. We believe the Imams of Ahlul Bayt. Likewise, in, in, even in, in Sunni literature, there is evidence where they say that people like the second caliph and people like Omar bin Abdul Aziz were of the ones who should deserve the title of Muhaddath. Now, Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam, of the clearest proofs that we have within Shia literature is what is known as Mus'haf Fatima. Now, Mus'haf Fatima, okay. Okay. people assume when they hear the word Mus'haf. We'll come to that in just one minute. Apologies. So, yeah. Yeah, we have a caller on the line. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. No. Mus'haf Fatima. Right, when we're talking about Mus'haf. Yes. The Mus'haf of Fatima, some people started to make an accusation against the Shia by saying that this Mus'haf of Fatima is the Shia Quran. It's not the Shia Quran. It doesn't have anything of the Quran. Okay. The Mus'haf of Fatima is Jibra'il alayhi salam consoling Fatima. Don't say Jibra'il can't talk to Fatima because Jibra'il communicated with Maryam in the Quran. Mm -hmm. Yes. Jibra'il consoles Fatima. I remember the same Jibra'il a few years earlier had seen the incident of the cloak, Hadith al Kisa. Yes, yes, yes. He is someone who is privy to Muhammad and Ali and yeah, Fatima and Hassan and Hussein. The same Jibra'il visits Fatima, consoles Fatima, who is grieving the death of her father, peace be upon him and his family. He consoles her by telling her, A. Where is her father in paradise now? Mm. The world of Barzakh. B, tales of the past prophets of Allah. What did I say earlier? Nobody can tell you about the past prophets of Allah like Muhammad and no. Muhammad because they had amongst them, with them, Mus'haf Fatima. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Imam al sadiq says, and this is pure imamology. Okay. Forget debating Ghadir. In the Quran, out of the Quran, hadiths come to what the Imams are saying. True. Imam al Sadiq says, With us is the Mus'haf of Fatima. With us is the armor of the prophets. The sword, Dhul Fiqar. Yes. With us is the knowledge of the past prophets. Yes. Therefore, when there are people out there discussing Imam, trying to prove is the Imam, look what Imam al Sadiq is saying. Mm -hmm. Imam al Sadiq is saying that amongst the pieces of knowledge that we inherit as Imams, that when you ask us about Jesus and Moses and Adam and Noah, and you think, how do we know about them when we lived a thousand, two thousand, five thousand years after them, we had amongst us Mus'haf Fatima. Okay. We had Kitab Ali. Right. We had the Jafar, the red, the white. We had the armors. We had all of that knowledge inherited. So, Mus'haf Fatima uh -huh. is Jibra'il communicating about past events, future events. Wow. What will happen to the Ummah? Okay. Dictated and written by Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. He dictates Jibra'il. Fatima al-Zahra is the listener, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib is the writer. Subhanallah, subhanallah. And that is a great source of ilm for the Imams of Ahlul Bayt Because how do the Imams of Ahlul Bayt have their ilm? Either the Prophet peace be upon him says, I am the city of knowledge and Ali is its gate. Gate, yes. Or ilham, inspiration. Inspiration. The way Allah inspired the mother of Musa, put your baby in the 
basket, let him roll down the Nile. Mm -hmm. Likewise, we have Mus'haf Fatima. Likewise, we have Kitab Ali and so on. Okay. And the concept of Kasb and acquiring of knowledge. Right. Um, Amir Mu'azzi has a wonderful book called The Divine Guide in Early Shiism. Shi yes, yes. I've... Looking at the esoteric rather than only the exoteric, looking at the inner spiritual dimensions mm. that made the Ahl al-Bayt differ, that put the Ahl al-Bayt different from the Arab riffraff that surrounded them. Yes, yes. The Ahl al-Bayt are mystical personalities whose roots are the pre-eternal realm of pledges. Mm -hmm. Yes. Don't look at the Imams of Ahlul Bayt as just Arab personalities who lived in Medina and Mecca with the rest of the Arabs. The Imams of Ahlul Bayt are the carriers, if not they are the divine lights. The manifestation of Allah's light in its minimum forms can be seen in Muhammad and Al Muhammad. True. So what you have... Did Jibra'il speak to Fatima? Jibra'il is honored to speak to Fatima. It's not the other way around. Yeah. Fatima is Zahra is not the one who's honored that Jibra'il. On the contrary, Jibra'il is honored to be around Ashab al Kisa. Yes. Is honored allowed to be around the Holy Five. When have you ever seen Jibra'il saying that I am honored to be around pagan X or pagan Y? Munafiq X or Munafiq no. Y? No. I want to be around Muhammad and Ali, Fatima and Hassan and Hussein. Subhanallah. Ashab al Kisa, Ashab al Mubahala, the ones who are the ark of Nuh for mankind. Mm. With them lies salvation. Yes, yes, yes. We'll come to the point about also the offering of condolences. But let's, just before then, uh, say now we have two or three questions for, for our WhatsApp. Um, I have a question why is Mary called Virgin Mary? Is it in the name or does it have a different meaning? Uh, and also, is there, what is, the, how was the relationship between Lady Fatima Zahra alayhi salam and Hasnain alayhi salam? Well, the Virgin Mary's, you know, the, the belief in Maryam al Adra, for example, al Adra, the Virgin Mary, the one who is giving uh, birth mm -hmm. without having been married. Right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can create a spirit, say, kun fayakun, in the way he created Adam. So that is the meaning. In terms of Fatima Zahra and Hassan, we'll come to in a second. Yeah, of we course. Look at of course. Zahra's age of giving birth. Okay, this is yeah. an interesting question. I have a question for Dr. Omar regarding uh, Hazrat Maryam, uh, peace be upon her. Chapter 19, verse 28, refers to her as sister of Aaron. Is the Aaron mentioned here, Prophet Harun, Islam? Why is Maryam Islam referred to as sister? Thank you. That's the... Some say literally sister. Some say because she is from that particular lineage and tribe. Mm -hmm. So there's a difference of opinion. Okay, there. and very quickly, Salam alaikum, Sayyidina and Muhammad. Is it true that Imam Mahdi's mother is a Roman princess? Thank you. Make there is an opinion that Imam Al Mahdi, Ajallah Fajr Sharif, uh -huh. his mother Najis is from the line uh, of one of the disciples of Christ. Okay. Others say no, it's just one of the ladies from the African uh, slaves of the time. Right. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Sayyid Amar, we, I was just going to ask you about the offerings, as it were, of condolences. And this is quite key as well, yeah. isn't it? Because, if, again, if we look at the parallels of, you know, uh, Mary and Fatima Zara. Yeah. What exactly happened and the Prophet's position in paradise? What, what, what exactly can we say about the, the nobility the, of her now? Yeah, the, the, biggest, the biggest loss this religion ever saw was the loss of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family. He was the mercy to mankind. Yes. And who do you console first but the family? And who consoles? The angels weep when a believer dies. How about the Amir of believers? How about the Prince of believers? How about the very meaning of believer? Mm -hmm. So when they send their condolences, they send their condolences to the very family who they believe all of this exists because of. Yes. All these lines that we read, without Al-Muhammad, there is no 
سبب متصل بين الأرض والسماء. There is no connection between the heavens and the earth. آل محمد are not ex-pagans who used to uh, bow down before idols and then became Muslim. Mm-hmm. Islam occurs because knowing that there are people like Al Muhammad who will guide mankind. Yes. Right. Okay. Another question, um, Aliza Arif. What is the similarities um, and differences of hijab in Sayyidah Fa- uh, Maryam and Sayyidah Fatima is the question. Interesting question because yeah, I think, yeah, I think every single place you go in the world, mm-hmm. there is a Maryam in a hijab and a Fatima in a hijab. In the sense that every church you go to, there's always Mar- Do you Have you ever seen Mary's hair in a church? No. No I, I asked the viewers, have no you announce. ever, ever, ever been to a church where you've seen Maryam's hair? What's always the look? Like, there's, there's a veil. Veil. Um, and I think that gives us an indication that the veil plays a, another beautiful parallel. Beautiful. Okay. Which is the veil of Fatima and the veil of... Maryam. Maryam. Okay, yep. um, and after Imam comes, uh, what will hijab be after Imam comes for men and women? Is a question. I mean, nothing changes. Okay, fine, yep. fair enough. Okay, so, so now we've, we've spoken again in the first half. We looked at food being received for the Blessed Virgin Mary. Yes. Now, again, let's look at the status of Fatima Zahra, what, it, what Jibra'il, has happened yeah. here now? If Jibra'il can, bring, can talk to Mary, he talks to Fatima. Yeah. If Jibra'il can bring food to Mary, why can he not bring food to Fatima? Mm. And we have a narration in Shi'i literature. Okay. That the Prophet, peace be upon him, his family, one day is eating prayer. Imam Ali is behind him. The Prophet finishes the prayer and says, I want to come home for dinner. Okay. Now, that, that moment when your father-in-law says, I want to come home, and you're just like, I don't know <laughs> if we have anything. How am I going to tell the missus and so on? So when Imam Ali alayhi salam returns and he tells Fatima Zahra, your dad's come home for dinner, Fatima Zahra is worried because there isn't nothing there. She then goes in and she begins to recite verse 114 of okay. Surah 5. And by the way, if any of you guys don't have uh, dinner and you've got guests coming, maybe you should do this and see if it works. Okay. So Surah 5, Surah Al Ma'idah, verse 114. She remembers that these disciples of Jesus said to him, mm. can God send us food from heaven? Yes, yes. I mean, I, mean, I've, I, I, I can read it here. When the disciples said, Oh, Isa, son of Mariam, will your Lord consent to send down to us food from heaven? Food from heaven. There's a question. He said, be careful of your duty to Allah if you are believers. Yes. Yeah. If you really believe in me, a person who questions a prophet of God no, straight away this person is a munafiq. Mm. Okay, okay. Some, let's give benefit of the doubt, may be in a moment where they're trying to see from ilm al to ayn al They want to see yaqeen with their own eyes. Most of the time, those who question the Prophet's knowledge are munafiqin, hypocrites. And if anyone you see get rude to a Prophet, that's mm-hmm. a munafiq. And anyone who raises their voice against the Prophet is a munafiq. Put these criteria. These are all hypocrites. Now, Mary, uh, Maryam received food from the heavens. Fatima prays to Allah. The lines of Nabi Isa in Surah 5 verse 114. Okay. Allahumma rabbana anzal alayna ma'idatan min as-sama'i takun lana eidan li awalina wa akhirina wa a'itan mink wa arzuqna wa anta khayru al-raziqeen. Oh Allah, send us food from heaven. Subhanahu. I am Fatima, daughter of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi. The same way that Jesus spoke to you and you sent him food, send us, and that Jibra'il came with food for Fatima al-Zahra. Subhanallah. Salam. Subhanallah. So therefore, Maryam spoke to Jibra'il, Fatima does. Maryam received food from Jibra'il, so does Fatima alayhi salam. Okay. What's next? Let's keep going on the yeah, parallels. Yeah, so now we've spoken about the Hail Marys and the Rosebead. Again, now let's look at the same... Is there parallel. anything more famous than Islam mm. than the Tasbih of Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam? Many Muslims in the world, you will find that they will do the Tasbih of Fatima. Fatima. And there are many Muslims in the world who don't know that this is the Tasbih of Fatima. You will see them doing Subhanallah after Salah 33 times, Alhamdulillah 33 times, Allahu Akbar 34 times. times. Uh, by the way, I remember one of the, uh, I'm, I'm doing this and I remember one of the ulama, he used to say, he, he used to never do Tasbih in front of every, you know, sometimes you have uh, people who will sit like this and do Tasbih 
And there are some who don't just sit like this, they'll start playing. I don't yeah. know what's going on with this one. <laughs> have you seen the ones who start like this? I have, yes. Yeah, so you're thinking, hold on a minute. I know that tasbih is, is when you're just like, subhanAllah, subhanAllah. But when you start flicking like this, I don't know what's going on. In some cases, this is holy material. Um, but then you, you've got this, this um, I remember one, one alim, mm -hmm. he would never do tasbih. But you know what he would do with the tasbih? He, he would do tasbih, but put it under his yeah. abaya. Okay. So that no, there's no showing off in ibadah. Now, Father Zahra, Imam Ali Ali they ask the, uh, the father, father-in-law, uh, for another help in the house. And he tells them, I'll give you something better than the help. Right. 33 times, subhanAllah. 33 times, alhamdulillah. 34 Four times, subhanAllah. And Fatima Zahra, not only that is her tasbih as a gift from her father, she used to make sabha. Right. She used to make the rosary beads. Maryam had the rosary bead, which people do Hail Marys and decades. Mm. Fatima has the rosary beads. And the rosary bead of Fatima, she used to collect what? Dust, Dust from, the, from the grave the of Hamza. Hamza. Hamza, yes. Yes. And today you have people, when you go to that country and you go near the grave of Hamza, they say, this is bid, I don't come near. Mm. Hamza, why are you? Fatima Zahra used to collect it. And she used to make the tasbih. Okay, okay. So that's another. And that's why I recommend everybody, humbly I say this, after Salah, you'll find that some of us Shia, we will straight away, for example, after Salah, we will say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. I remember someone absurdly um, thought that we say, Khan al Amin, Khan al Amin, Khan al Amin, meaning that. Jibra'il should have gone to Ali, Ali. but he went to Muhammad. It's absolute stupidity. But, you know, this envy and jealousy is yeah, of course. natural for some. Now, what we say is Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Then you have some people stand up straight away. Mm -hmm. Some people maybe go into dua. Allahumma, for example, Allahumma ni asalka mujibati rahmatik. Yeah. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, if you finish salah, and you straight away do the tasbih of Fatima al Zahra alayhi salam. 33, subhanAllah, 33, alhamdulillah, 34, Allahu oh. Akbar. The fire of hell will never touch you. SubhanAllah. Imagine the barakah in the rosary bead of Fatima. Mm. Yeah. And the intercession, we'll come to that a little bit later yeah. on as well. Um, so again, the Virgin Mary gave birth at quite a young age to her divine son, as it were, the prophet Isa, Jesus. So what happened, again, now let's look at the... Mary gives birth. Let's look at the At the age side. of, as we said, Catholic priests say, Mary gave birth in her early teens. Mm -hmm. And she died in her mid-40s. According to some, there's different opinions. In Christian belief, in Islam, Fatima gave birth to Imam al-Hassan when she was 10, 11 years of age. Okay. Again, a similarity. Yes. Both become mothers at a young age. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, question, um, Sina. Did Maryam marry... After giving birth to Hazrat Isa al Islam? No. Okay. In Islamic belief, no. Right. Okay. So you've mentioned about the Divine Lady Fatima Zahra Salam alayhi wa salam, giving birth, as it were, at a young age. And she gave birth, you know, to children, obviously, Has Hasnain al Islam, Zainab, Umm Qudthum, Salam alayhi wa salam, peace be upon all of them. What's the status now of infallibility? We've looked at the infallibility of uh, Mary, now let's look at the infallibility criteria and the status of Fatima Zahra. In the Quran, uh -huh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to choosing and purifying and choosing Maryam above all the women. Istafaki, mm. taharaki, istafaki, taharaki, purifying you. Okay. okay. Allah, when He wants to, can purify a group of people to keep away sin from them. Which ayah do we have where Allah says, I, I keep away it. all impurities? Mm. 33, 33. 33, yeah. 33. Yes, yes. 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 So, Fatima Zahra, according to Fatima Zahra, even proof of her infallibility. Fatima was a part of me. Mm. Whoever angers her, angers me. Whoever angers me, angers Allah. The pleasure of Fatima was the pleasure of Allah. Yes. The anger of Fatima was the anger of Allah. Again, that is purity. Yes, yes. So in the same way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Tathir with Maryam, he mentioned with Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam. Okay, so again in the first part, say now we've mentioned about the truthfulness or the siddiqa, mm. the realm of reaching, you know, being truthful. Again, now let's turn to Fatima alayhi salam. 
What is her status? Maryam is Sadiqa. Okay. Fatima is Sadiqa. Maryam is Tahira. Fatima is Tahira. Fatima is Zahra throughout her life. Never uttered a lie. Never backbit. Never gossiped. Never was someone who bought and defamed people's reputations. Everything she said. If her father is Sadiq, then what will be produced except Sadiq? Of course. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Uh, I want to spend a bit of time on intercession now. And we've spoken about intercession through her, specifically, you know, the Catholic school of thought in Christianity. What about Fatima Zahra Salaam as an intercessor or intercession? We... As Muslims, mm. majority of us believe that on the day of judgment, there are certain personalities Allah has given the honor that they can intercede on our behalf. Ayatul Kursi says, Man illa Who can intercede on behalf of Allah except, except with the permission of Allah? Allah. The martyr, the shaheed, mm -hmm. the truthful, the sadiq, the memorizer of the Qur'an, the hafir. These are people who with the sincere knee, are those who are able to intercede. intercede. Who knows the Qur'an but the lady in whose house the Qur'an was, was revealed. revealed. Yes, Who's no more doubt. truthful than Fatima al-Zahra? Who died as a martyr except Fatima. Yes. So therefore, we believe that on the Day of Judgment, like in Christianity, they believe Mary is a source of intercessory salvation. Uh -huh. Likewise, we believe Fatima the Zahra will be there, especially for her lovers mm -hmm. and the lovers of her sons. Okay, okay. So we spoke, we ended the first half and we actually just continued the first half of the show about talking about the divine birth, as it were, and her having... You know, a son. Now let's talk about Fatima Zahra salam alayhi salam, and the birth and the son. What can you talk about this? What's the, what's, again, what's the, the parallel here? Mary has a son known as Christ. Yeah. Who in Christian belief is the one who saved humanity. Mm. In Islam, Fatima has a son called Hussein, who Muslims, Shia, Sunni, Sufi, wherever you go, You'll find all of these different names of Muslim groups, all of them mention that Hussein is the savior of the religion of Islam. Had Hussein السلام, not risen against the corrupt rule of Yazid, son of Muawiyah, in the Damascus palaces, the ones who were destroying the sunnah of his, the teachings of his grandfather, the Prophet, peace be upon his family, mm -hmm. then we would have all said, As-salam ala al-Islam. Peace be upon the religion of Islam. Okay. But one man saved this religion. Likewise, you see that parallel with Jesus in Christian thought. Okay, okay. We have questions here now. Two questions here now. Uh, one question from Salma. Uh, what role did Fatima Zahra Salam and Islam play in spreading Islam? And also, how can we get her intercession on the Day of Judgment? <clears throat> in terms of what role did Fatima Zahra play in spreading of Islam? Firstly, the spiritual legacy of Fatima. You know, it can be found uh, in terms of the tasbih that we have until today. Yes. For, secondly, the representation politically of Fatima Zahra when she went with her father and her husband and her sons on the event of Mubahala. Mm. Thirdly, the sermon of Fatima al-Zahra is a sermon full of profound theology. Okay. That if you dissect that sermon line by line, the sermon of Fadak of Fatima al-Zahra, believe you me, mm -hmm. Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen himself is the gate to the city of knowledge. But Fatima al-Zahra, if you look at the first 20 lines, the way she talks about God, you can write a book on monotheism just on her description of God. Subhanallah. Yeah. Subhanallah. Okay. Um, Salaamu Alaikum. Why is Bibi Maryam's name different in the Bible as Mary? Um, There's also, a difference in language. Yeah, and also the Prophet's name is different in the Bible and the Quran, such as Joseph or David, except Prophet Adam, we have in common. You have these different it's languages. And... Arab, Mayak, Hebrew, mm -hmm. Arabic, different mm -hmm. pronunciations. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we're going into the last 10 minutes of the show sure. and we've got still quite a bit to get through to. Um, is there, is there a, an account, as it were, uh, say now, of 
where Fatima Zahra Salaam and you know um, Mary met as it were what 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 can we say about this is there some sort of mystical spiritual well, 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 connotation about all this Firstly they meet literally in the world of hadith okay. literally the okay. four greatest women yeah. who yeah Asiya Khadija Maryam Money. Fatima Fatim. so they literally meet there Mystically, mm -hmm. when Khadija gave birth in Shi'i literature, we believe mm -hmm. Maryam was one of the midwives who helped Khadija when she was giving birth to Fatima. Why? Right. Because the Quraysh boycotted Khadija. Okay. The Quraysh were right. putting sanctions on the Prophet. Yes. And she was his backbone. Mm. Religion would not have spread were it not for the wealth of Khadija and the sword of Ali. Yes. And so, what you had was, that when Khadija was giving birth, Maryam was one of the midwives. Okay. Look at that beauty. Right. Mystical coming together. Okay, okay. Yeah. If we talk about this uh, particular verse in, uh, in the Holy Quran, Surah Ali Imran, verse 42, and I'll just read the translation yeah. out. And when the angels said, O Maryam, surely Allah has chosen you and purified you and chosen you above the women of the world. Mm. So that, now, that aside, what can we say about Fatima Zahra? Maryam was the greatest woman According to the Quran of her time, when Fatima was born, Fatima was seen as the greatest woman in the history of the religion of Islam. Right. <clears throat> so if someone comes and tells you that you believe that Fatima Zahra is the greatest lady, but the Quran mm. says, in Allah, we say that no. On the contrary, Maryam was the greatest lady of her time. When Fatima was born, Fatima was the greatest. Right. Okay. okay. Why? Yeah. Number of reasons why. Fatima has a pre-eternal presence. Okay, yes. I was going to sort of come to that. Fatima is not some Arab girl. There's others who are Arab girls. Some are playing on swings. Some are running around with other kids. <clears throat> some are worshipping idols. Fatima is not an Arab girl. In the pre-eternal realm, Adam is asking God for forgiveness using her name. SubhanAllah. And the name of her husband and her father and her sons. Allahumma bihaqqi Muhammad wa anta al-Mahmood. Wa bihaqqi Ali wa anta al-A'la. Wa bihaqqi Fatima wa anta Fatima al-Samawat wa al-Aam. So you find that in the pre-eternal realm, I ask anyone, Adam used Maryam or Fatima? Yes. Fatima combines Nubuwa. And Imam. Inna a'tayna kal kawthar. The khair and the barakah is through Fatima. SubhanAllah. With all my love for Maryam alayhi salam. And I'm under the feet of Maryam. Yeah. Fatima's son. Hussein saved Islam. Fatima's great grandson, Al-Mahdi, is the one who brings justice onto the earth. Our Sunni brethren believe that Imam al-Mahdi is not born, but will come. Yes, yeah, sure. Shia believe that he's born, but he's an occultation. Like we believe Jesus was an occultation, Khidr is an occultation, others and so on. Um, but there's no doubt that Mah uh, Mahdi is from the sons of Fatima. Some say Mahdi is from the sons of Hassan. Others say Mahdi is from the line of Hussein. I don't mm -hmm. care. Ultimately, it goes back to Fatima. Of course. No doubt. No doubt about that. Some have even said... That in Hadith al kisa when we say Hum Fatima, mm -hmm. they are Fatima and her father and her husband and her sons and the secret bestowed within Fatima. There okay. are a number of opinions as to what is the Sir. Okay, yeah, it, it's... One of the opinions that they give is that the man who brings justice on the earth, Mahdi, alongside Mary's son, Christ. Mm -hmm. Again, parallel. Mary's son... Fatima's grandson at the end. Okay. They're the ones who bring justice. Jesus, because Muslims don't believe that he's crucified. No. In the no, general opinion. And Fatima's grandson, the Mahdi. Okay, okay. Yeah. So now we have just five minutes left. Viewers, if you do want to put in your final questions, then please do. The telephone number is 203 515 You can also WhatsApp your questions. Um, just in terms of a summation, as it were, Yes. We've, we've looked at both lives, as it were, and the biographies, and it's, 
you've spoken about the necessity, as it were, of the need for dialogue, interfaith discussion, but with a view to obviously progress, as it were. Just in the last two or three minutes, what would you say, as it were, you know, to, <coughs> to really put the message out there to Muslims, Christians, as it were? There are two fundamental yeah. verses I, I believe in in the Quran have to be applied today. Okay. Surah 5 verse 82 لَتَجِدَنَّ أَقْرَبَهُمْ مَوَدَّةً لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّا نَصَارَى ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ مِنْهُمْ قَسِيسِينَ وَرُهْبَانًا وَأَنَّهُمْ لَا يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ You'll find the closest brethren to you are the Christians. Christians, yeah. In reciprocal love with you. Mawadda. Mm. Not just hub. Mawadda. Because their priests and their monks are humble human beings who when they hear the words of Islam, their eyes overflow with tears. SubhanAllah. And then, قُلْ يَا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ Surah 3 verse 64. Okay. O people of the book, تَعَالَوْا إِلَىٰ كَلِمَةٍ سَوَاءٍ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمْ أَلَّا نَعْبُدَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَلَا نُشْرِكَ بِهِ شَيْئًا وَلَا يَتَّخِذْ بَعْضُنَا بَعْضًا أَرْبَابًا مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهُ O people of the book, come to a joint word. Mm. And I wish more Muslims and Christians came to this joint word. There are Christians out there who are saying Islam is the most evil thing on the earth. There are Muslims out there who call the people who are Christians, Nasranis and the Shia Rawaf of the Nets, behead them like ISIS did. Mm -hmm. Whereas the Quran said, Ya Ahl al-Kitab, come. Let's talk. Let's see what we have in common. If we can build on that type of worldview. Mm -hmm. Love. A reciprocity of dialogue. True. Yes. And a coming together. I think you're going to see better times ahead for our kids. Inshallah. Not us. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, we have a question. So now, is there any relationship between Fatima, peace be upon her, and the Christian Our Lady of Fatima? I don't really... You see, the thing is, the, the, the visions that were seen there talk of a lady whose son will bring justice, a lady of the rosary bead. Mm. Christians will interpret that as Mary. Okay. And I don't think many know that that could equally be Fatima. Right. And then the rest is with God. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Um, so now I think we've just run out of time. I'm just going to check if there are any more questions left, but I think we have gone through them all. Thank um, you. So we have um, one more question. Surah Ali Insan. Al Insan. Al Insan. Yes, yes, sorry, sorry. sorry. Yep, my yep, my yep. mistake. Uh, Al Insan, also known as Surah Dahr, da as it were. Yeah. There's a particular verse in there that talks about feeding. Feeding, correct. Without reward and without thanks. What, what do you have to say about that? That, that just shows the one. The and who is it referring to? The, the beauty of the altruism and the generosity of Muhammad and Al Muhammad. Mm. And the Prophet told Fatima and Ali, make a nither, a mannat. You know? Yes. That if yes. they get better, <coughs> you're going to fast for three days. Every time they break their fast, someone knocks at the door and wants some food <clears throat> and they altruistically give it and they give it for the sake of Allah you don't need to thank her don't need to reward us and that really highlighted that that family truly remained the family not only of God's guidance on earth but the family of generosity purity and truth mm -hmm. okay viewers I think we've run out of time and uh, I think you'll agree uh, Dr. Syed Manakshwani has done an absolutely superb job today in terms of breaking down the biographies and revealing the personalities, as it were, of the Virgin Mary and also Fatima Zahra, Salaam and Islam. And if I can just add also, you know, when Hadith e Kisar um, also mentions the status and the pivot, as it were, of Fatima Zahra, Salaam and Islam, everything pointing to and from her, her father, her son, and so on and so forth. So with that, We'd like to leave that um, and we're going to end the show now. So see you again next week, inshallah, from Dr. Sayyid Amar Nakshwani and myself, Muhammad Ali. Assalamu alaikum. Mm -hmm.